In this video, I'm going to show you two ways that you can create your timetables using DAX or Power Query. We're going to look at both of these methods step by step and also why you should be using it in the first place. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. Working with time is not really something that I typically cover, mostly because most of my work revolves around measuring dates or days between dates. And if you're a long time subscriber to the channel, you'd know that I always preach to create your calendar tables if you want to work with time intelligence calculations. And you can also do the same when working with time. You can create a central timetable to do your calculations relating to time uh, functions. So here we have a subset of the Northwind dataset, which is the dataset that we typically work with. It's a, a fictional company that sells grocery goods internationally. So I've only imported a few of the tables here just for us to work with. Uh, and it's a pretty simple setup and it's meant to just show uh, the number of orders that were ordered and how much they are for. So going to the table view here, we have, first of all, the products, which is the list of all the unique products. We have the orders, which is basically showing us uh, when the orders were made and also the time. And I've created uh, two different dimensions here, time in minutes and time in seconds, which uh, we'll have a look at how to work with later. We have the order details here, which uh, breaks down the orders into the individual products that were in those orders. So what those products are based on their product ID, how many and how much were they ordered for. And then we also have our calendar table here, which I've already created. It's meant to be used for time intelligence calculations for measuring, you know, up to the date level granularity. Let's say we want to analyze the number of products ordered in a time of day. Now we have the time in minutes and time in seconds to work with. So the first instinct that you'll have is, okay, well, let's just work with uh, adding quantity in a bar chart and then the order uh, time in minutes, which uh, will give you somewhat uh, a working kind of bar chart like this, but it's not really grouped in a useful way for us to work with. So for example, by itself, it might give you some information or some insights on you know which time of day is uh, very concentrated, but it doesn't really group your data into useful groupings like hours or if it's daytime or nighttime. And this is where the timetable can actually help with. So let's have a look at creating this timetable, first of all, in Power Query. So let's go to transform data here to bring up Power Query. So the timetable is essentially a table that lists out all the possible time values that we would like to see. So let's start by creating this timetable that goes all the way down to the minutes. We're not going to go to seconds because I don't think we need that level of granularity for our timetable. So let's go to new source from here and then we'll click blank query. So from the empty formula bar, we use an equals and then we start with an curly brackets. So inside we put zero dot dot one, four, three, nine. So there's 1,440 minutes in a day, but we end it to 1439 because the count starts with a zero. So what this does is it creates a row that starts from zero all the way to 1439. So this basically gives us all the minutes in a single day. So the next thing is to convert this into a table. So we click uh, convert to table, we hit OK, and it will convert this into a column. Next, we need to divide each of these values into 1440, which will give us the exact minutes in a time format that we can use. So what we'll do is we'll click the column here. We'll go to the add column here. And then under the standard, we'll just uh, use a divide and then we'll divide this to 1440. And it will just give you a decimal number here, which uh, doesn't make sense yet. But if you convert this into a time format like this, you'll see that it now gives us the time in the whole day 
separated by minutes here. So as you can see, it starts from the first minute and at the very end, it will give you all the different times up to the minute value in this table. Now that we have the time in this row format, maybe we want to add different groupings, for example. So let's start by um, looking at other things that we might want to add. So for example, you can see that now here, we can use this, uh, this time option on the ribbon here. And we can add other, other, um, other columns here, like for example, hour, uh, which if we click here, we'll just let you group these minutes into the hours that they belong to. So if we want to have a column chart, for example, like we showed before, but only have a bar for each hour, this will allow us to do that. Another thing that you might want to add is to distinguish if the hour is AM or PM, which uh, is, should be pretty simple. You can simply just add a custom column. So let's write our if statements here. So if, if the hour, is less than 12, then it should be AM, else it's PM. And we'll just call this one time of day. And there we go. So we should have all of these categorized as AM or PM. We'll just call this one time and we can probably delete this column and that gives you a timetable created in Power Query. So if you hit close and load, that's pretty much it. You can start working with this straight away. So to use this, you just need to make sure that it is connected via relationship to the uh, data that you want to work with it on. So in this case, we have the time. We're gonna connect this to the time in minutes. And in this instance, as you can see, we're connecting the time table that we've created into the time in minutes value that we have in our order details table, which is basically a converted version of the time in seconds. So it, it groups them into minutes. So you will see that they all don't have seconds. So if you have seconds, you have to convert this first into minutes so that it can work with our timetable. But if you don't know how to do that, I'll, I'll show it to you in a little bit. So for now you hit save like this, and now that will create the relationship like this. And then instead of using the time in minutes in our X axis, you, we can use now the hour, which lets us group those uh, different bars into single hours. Or you can even add legends here, like for example, um, which one is time of day, uh, or if you didn't want to see it by hour or just see time of day, you can see it like this. So let me show you how to convert the seconds that we have here into minutes. So, so here we have the time column, including the date, the time in seconds. And I first convert this into a time value, which obviously doesn't include the date, but it in, does include the time along with the second. The next thing that I do is I duplicate this time value into a text format that excludes seconds. The easier way to try and do this is by selecting the time column that you want to convert. You go to add column, go to in, go to columns from examples. And then from here, just give suggestions to this uh, examples to what you want to grab. So if I put 213, for example, what it will do is uh, it will it will try to understand what I want to get from this time column, for example. So what it will know that I only want to get the first few, uh, the hour and the minutes. And as you can see, it suggests what it could get on each of these rows. So um, it writes the code for us essentially. So from here, you just simply hit OK, and that will create the column for you. Uh, but I've already done that, so I'm just going to delete it. And all I've done is basically just convert this back into a time, rename it, and that should be it. So that should be working for us um, to combine with our timetable. Now that we know how to create this in Power Query, Let's have a look at creating this index using roughly the same method. We'll go to modeling and then we'll create a new table. We're going to call this a time index. And we're going to start by creating first a few variables here. So we'll, we'll create a start time. 
uh, which will be the start of our timetable, which will be, you know, midnight. And we'll use the time function here, which basically lets us uh, generate a date time value format by just feeding it the hour, minute, and second. So we'll just put 000 here to give us the starting time. Then the next thing is we will also store the minutes in day because we need to reference it later, 1440. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to generate the table that we want to, um, to create. So for this, we're just going to use select columns. This lets us define the individual columns and values that we want to have in this custom table that we want to create in DAX. So the next thing is we need to create a use generate series, which basically does the same thing as the curly brackets that we did earlier in Power Query, but except now this is in DAX. So what we need to do is a generate series where it lets us say, okay, what is the starting value? And then we, what is the end value? So zero, and then the end value is minutes in day. But remember, we need to do a minus one because it's, the count starts from zero. And then the increment value is one. Let's first start by adding the time here. So we'll create our first column by naming it time. And then what we'll do is start time plus value, which is the generated value that we got from the generate series divided by minutes of day. Now, if we have a look at how this looks like, so what it does is it generates us one column, first of all, that lists out every single minute in the day. Uh, ignore the date format here. That's just because the time function returns your times in a date time format, but the time itself or the date here is uh, kind of irrelevant. We can just change it by just simply selecting it and just changing it into time. So that will just give us the time uh, format that we want to work like here. Let's continue creating the other columns that we want in our timetable. So we'll, next thing is hour. So we want to group this obviously by hour. So now we want to do hour here and basically convert this time into hour. So we can just simply copy this part like this. And then we'll also do the minute. So now if we hit that enter, so now we have the hours grouping and the minutes, but actually we don't really need the minutes, but we can leave it there for now. And then let's say we want to add the, the, the time of day, for example, if it's AM or PM. So if we do, if is, uh, well, we want to check the hour, right? So we're just going to copy the hour. If the hour is less than 12, then it's AM. Else it's PM, like this. Here we go. So we have now the groupings for AM and PM like we wanted, exactly like how we have it in the Power Query version. Now, if we go back to our relationships, first of all, um, you would only typically have one of these. So I'm, I'm keeping both of them just for illustration purposes. You would connect this to your time in minutes like this. And theoretically, it should work exactly the same way. So if you bring in uh, the hours from the time index and then you go and count the quantity, it should work as expected. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create your own timetables in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.